We're at Viking Aircraft Engines and we just completed another installation on a Zenith 750 for a customer. This one has the uh, Viking 130 engine up front, uh, Duke propeller, and the Viking header tank fuel system. Let's quickly look at the uh, individual things that were installed in the airplane. From the front is the Duke propeller. It's a very nice propeller. Uh, uses a uh, inch and three eighths spacer and is inset a little bit into the cowling with a half inch uh, groove around it. An exhaust system was installed. As you can tell, the difference between this exhaust system and other exhaust systems on aircraft engines is that it's just four bolts holding it to the engine. All the, inter all the exhaust pipes themselves are cast into the engine by Honda. They're very simple, very quiet, and no chance of leaks. Viking 750 cowling has been installed. It's a simple procedure. Basically, just clip it with a couple of ice grips to the airplane, line up the front like we showed, and uh, add the hinges. Usually, just do a straight shot with the hinges, even though the airplane's curved. And that allows for a nice fit to the airplane. And then the top cowling goes on after that. Engine needs a cooling system. It's basically just a radiator on the belly and sheet metal box around it. Very quick to make. As everything gets painted, you can see the line of the airplane then goes into the radiator box and it all gets the same color. It's almost invisible underneath there. Cooling air then enters the front and goes right into the top of the radiator. Nice clean installation. Provides for a nice open and uncluttered engine compartment. Engine mount installation. Basically some rubber grommets, engine mounts, and a TIG welded engine mount. Leave this one off until the end. That gets installed at the end. That makes everything else line up perfectly. It's a very quick installation using two and a half inch bolts or AN bolts through the firewall. And tighten that up. And do the same at the engine. Use the supplied bolts and tighten it up. A little more plumbing, meaning the cooling lines, hoses. Just coming off the head here. <coughs> This is like the departure from in the past. And then with a 45 down there, a 90, coming aft and then straight down into the radiator here. And then from the thermostat housing, 135 degrees, coming aft, going over, and then into the other side. Details of this, of course, are in the installation video that shows uh, a lot more detail to this installation. Like I said, small change here, coming straight back with the top hose rather than trying to go down because it gets a little cluttered down there then trying to get by the oil filter and so forth. Coolant bottle on the firewall. New system with Viking is the five, four or four to five pound cap. It sits right up front and then a hose from there to the coolant bottle being mounted below the pressure cap. Install your throttle cable. This one is just a shorty that's being borrowed by the builder in order to get the engine started. But the hookup out here is the original. Hook it up here, and then the cable goes all the way around the engine and into the cockpit. And then clip it on here, and set your idle right here. Install the computer that operates the engine. Just bring your main wire bundle through the firewall, through the pass-through, and route it over to the ECU. And mount that with rubber mounts, and snap the connectors into place. We're in the back of the airplane, basically underneath the, in the access. Install your header tank, and there are four hoses coming in. From above there, two vent lines, two feed lines, go right to the top of the tank. There's also a fuel transducer, uh, level sensor, and wire that 
up to your wire bundle and a separate gauge on the panel. Fuel pumps are right here. You can get your check valve assembly, fuel pressure transducer, high pressure filter, and then just run a hose all the way to the engine. We'll show the routing of that from the top. There's still bundling to be done here, but the layout is all complete. There are more things that are gonna go in here. Here we did a U-turn and then through in front of the landing gear so we can get past the landing gear. We did the U-turn because of the mechanism of the uh, control system. Then we came down just in front of the landing gear and then we went through the channel and the belly. And we did this before we mounted the radiator so it's all going through there. And we're coming out along the nose wheel up front here, right there. Use some ADAL clamps to clear the nose wheel. And then just run the hose up along the engine and eventually it gets to the high pressure pump on the engine. And that completes the whole fuel system. You're going to have the, the lines are just tied up here for now. You come in from your header tank. You put a channel up in the roof here to cover it all when it's done. And then two go to the left wing and two go to the right wing. All right, install your instrumentation. Very quick to do. Mount the actual monitor in the panel. Run a cable from that serial cable to the brain box right here. And install your sensors on the engine and then just run one pre-made cable to each sensor and power things up. Oil pressure transducer right here. Gearbox temperature right here. Coolant temperature right there. Fuel pressure we saw in the back by the pumps. Viking steel bungee. This is a suspension system for the nose wheel manufactured by Viking. Install that according to the directions that are supplied with that. Batteries. Your fireable forward package will include two of them. They're uh, the Odyssey Extreme PC310s. We use two batteries because we want a backup battery in flight in case we were to lose electricity for some reason or another. We run dual buses. These are the engine buses, basically one for negative, one for positive. These are not for the rest of the airplane. Everything is wired to these buses. And then from the output of one negative and one positive bus, you'll run up cables to your aircraft buses but they don't get intertwined any, in any other way. Okay, let's take a look at the wiring of these components. Let's start at the batteries. Um, we're running smaller cables from the batteries because both batteries are engaged during starting. So it's a must to have both batteries during starting because we're only, ru only running 10 gauge um, cables from them. That enables us to get a nice secure terminal crimps and uh, torque on the small battery hardware. We like these batteries because they're small. They're uh, uh, modern lead acid batteries, very popular in aircraft. Uh, they also provide enough power to start the engine. The advantage is they're less expensive than lithium batteries and they're also more stable and trouble free than, than lithium batteries. We used lithium batteries for many years. We're going back to these. All right, so each battery uh, goes through a solenoid and then powers up the positive bus. The grounds are done uh, also directly from the battery, uh, twice to each end of the ground bus. Then two main grounding cables run from there up to the engine. Strain relief on the engine and bolt to lugs on the engine so you have uh, primary and a backup grounding system. As far as positive cables, the main wiring for the positive, very simple. You're going to have your um, main battery cable running to the starter. You can see it right there. Okay, that one goes then up to the positive bus inside, and then you do another one from the starter, and you just jump over to the 
alternator right here and you strain relieve the alternator cable also as soon as it leaves the alternator because if you don't uh, the vibration from the alternator will cause that to fail over time okay switches by the way this uh, layout is temporary it has not been bundled up or anything and that's because builder wants to put a more permanent shelf and instrument panel in this is just uh, done because we have the time here at Viking to do this job now so it's obviously not completed with tie wraps and things like that all right switches we've got our uh, main uh, set of switches that we need to operate the engine we got the alternator switch battery switch uh, and then the battery 2 switch and pump 1 and pump 2 got 5 amps on each pump because the pumps that are in the header tank draw a very low amperage also need a key switch just to crank the engine so power that up and then run a wire over to the starter relay starter relay then according to the wire diagram cranks the starter this is a project that's being worked on over at wheels and wings by Harman and it now uh, came over here for a couple of days to get an engine installed it's quick to install the engine if you have a similar project just bring it by on a trailer and we'll, we'll put it in for you the uh, fuel system is done the engine is hanging cooling system is in place um, the switches the batteries the engine inf uh, information as far as your monitoring it's all done uh, pitch has been set on the prop and all the test running is done and the airplane can now go back to the owner uh, and the workshop over at uh, Wheels and Wings and have the wings and the completion of the airplane done.